Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my first ever Age of Empires 2 PC cast. And what a great way to start it off. We have two amazing players here today. If you guys know anything about Age of Empires 2 in the pro scene, you already know who they are. But let's get some introductions out of the way here. In the upper left, in the red, playing as the Malay, it is Hera. And in the bottom right, you should know this guy as well. It's MBL. Gonna be playing as the Aztecs. Now, this is, of course, as always, my personal as well as a lot of other people's favorite map. The one, the only. Tournament Arabia. Now, let's get that out of the way. <laughs> um... All that I ask from you guys is that you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now, in the bottom right here, we do have MBL playing as the Aztecs, as I said before. Uh, he's already got a few pigs already over by his TC, and we're probably going to be seeing him go for a boar pull here in a little bit. Both players did go for their double house right away. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, we're going to be seeing some deer pushing, uh, as you do at this level quite often. And we've got a lumber camp coming up over on the right. Three villagers going straight to that, in fact. Uh, over on the left, we do have the first bo uh, boar pull of the game. Going to be going straight now to the TC. Let's see how expertly done this happens. And just like that, perfect boar pull. Could not ask for much more than that. And let's see how well uh, MBL does here. And we're pulling his now back toward his TC. And at the same exact time, he's even pushing a deer there on the left. Nicely done. And during all of that, it looks like he will get his boar. Let's see. Perfectly done. Gets it and continues to push his deer. That is just some uh, next level stuff right there. You love to see it. Uh, a lot of people like to, you know, skip past this early game stuff. But you really got to remember, it's the early game stuff that really puts you ahead, in my opinion. The, the little nuances, the little details that the uh, pro players really put into their gameplay that separates them from the rest. And we're going to continue to see some more deer get pushed now towards that TC. And we're going to see our second boar pull now from Hira on the left. And he should be uh, being able to get that without a hitch. Uh, kind of expect that. Uh, by the way, uh, this replay was submitted by my good friend Azu, uh, saying this is definitely one if I were to ever do a PC cast uh, this would be the one to do it. So really hoping this is going to be a good game. I don't know who wins. I think this was from a tournament or something. Um, so maybe you guys have seen it possibly on Twitch or somewhere. But this is my first time seeing it. So you're going to get my genuine reaction and casting throughout. So right now, both players just continuing to eco. We're not seeing anything crazy. We're not seeing like any weird like tower rushes or very fast barracks or anything like that. We're almost six minutes into the game here. Six minutes game time anyway. And the next boar pull going to happen. Perfectly done. No losses on either side yet. Both players, very important. Uh, something that I love to look at when I am watching games is the idle TC time between pros. Two seconds, that's, that's really nothing here. But uh, both players, zero and two, uh, you know, two seconds. So, I mean, there's no idle time at all whatsoever. These players are on top of their game. And uh, we're really in for probably an amazing match, and I'm super excited for it. Uh, for those that are watching this in real time and haven't aren't watching this in the very, very far future, there's actually a DLC coming um, for Age of Empires 2. Maybe already released by the time I drop this video. I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, pretty excited about that. I know a lot of people are as well. Uh, as old as this game is, it just continues to get more and more updates, and the player base... Uh, just refuses to shrink and most times only grows, which really shows that this game uh, can stand the testament of time. And, you know, it's really, really awesome to see, uh, you know, players have been playing for you know 20 years versus players that have just started playing and, you know, bringing their own uh, spin uh, to the game. Uh, we have about 30 seconds left for uh, Feudal Age there for Hira. Same thing for MBL, about a minute and 14 seconds away from him. And down here, we do have a barracks coming up a, a lot quicker than Hira's on the front line. And it looks like the wood line now is going to be chopped up there in the back. That's a safe wood line, so he'll be okay. He's probably going to wall up right here. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it, using his structures to wall 
uh, as well. I wonder if Hero will build something this way. That way, if he does want to, if MBL wants to actually come in here, he'll have to actually go in through the TC to get to that wood line once that's walled. Uh, I guess we'll see, though. We really never know what these players, uh, you know, what they really want to do until it's done. Unless they, you know, they call it out or something. Nothing being made out of that barrack, so I assume it's just a safety racks at the moment. All right, we got the Eagle Scout now. Gonna be fighting against that Scout. And it looks like this Scout does take the W there. All right, Mining Camp gonna be going up there right next to the gold. We have the Barracks coming up as well. For those that don't know, the Malay and the Aztecs. Uh, they really, really like their ground game, I think, in my opinion. Um, and what I mean by that is infantry early on. Uh, whether it be archers, whether it be, you know, spearmen, man-at-arms type of deal. Uh, obviously, for um, the Aztecs, we have the Eagle Scouts, the, you know, their upgraded version, the Eagle Warrior and all that. Those become very, very powerful units later on in the game. Uh, they're a lot uh, more rare to be built early on, but you do see it. And we're going to be coming out straight with spearmen and skirmishers. Now, this composition is very defensive. Um, both these units not really used to be aggressive. They're used to obviously take out scouts that could be running amok around your base. Uh, they could be used to counter archers, just to fend off really any early on attacks. And now we actually have uh, some house. And there's that wall. So I kind of predicted that from the start. He's going to wall that off. Very smart choice. Forces the opponent, if he does want to get to this wood line, uh, to have to go next to it there. And even though this isn't really a hit and run type of army, he does have the... Uh, the Eagle Scout in there. He does manage to get a Villager nonetheless. I think Hira uh, could have stopped it if he was paying attention a little better. Definitely could have pulled that away and not lost it. Unfortunately, you know, little mistakes like that do happen. And in these pro-level games in any RTS, um, the, it's the little mistakes and how much they add up. Usually it doesn't come down to one player getting off some one crazy move or something like that or one crazy flank later. Uh, a lot of the times you guys watch these uh, these really, really strong players, uh, it just comes down to one player getting a slight advantage and then holding that advantage. Or one player, you know, make a slight com making a slight comeback from a early deposit that they put themselves into, unfortunately, or the opponent put, themselves in, uh, put them into. And you come back and then you slowly work your way back onto your opponent. Uh, but right now, though, I'm really liking MBL, uh, putting in a lot of work here. Uh, actually pushing away Hira. Uh, Hira does have a scout up here getting chased down by that Eagle Scout. And the two archers are going to try to help out. But the Eagle Scout, pretty good at tanking uh, most types of damage here early on, obviously, except, uh, except for Cavalry. And it looks like MBL going to be cleaning up here. Remember, uh, these skirmishers are designed to beat archers. And obviously right there, they're doing a fantastic job of that. A lot of farms coming up for here. We already got 16. Let's check down here. Uh, we have 11 now for MBL. And he's going to look around. Uh, luckily for here, he does have this very nice wall. His wood line very protected to actually harass that. His opponent would have to come up this way here and then this way all the way around the back. And let's just say he did. Let's just hypothetically say MBL did make his way around the back here to the wood line. If Hira had an army uh, that could fight it, he could come in from this direction and completely cut him off. There'd be nowhere for MBL to go. He would be forced to fight or just, you know, lose everything because running really wouldn't be an option at that point. Because running, he'd have to run, you know, back the exact same way he came. And that's just very, very bad <laughs> if he had to do that. Uh, MBL going to be pushing in now. It looks, this is crazy. He's actually going to go right along the left-hand side. He decides to turn and fight a little bit. He does have the Eagle Scout. Could be jumping in there with that to tank a little bit of those skirmishers. Um, he's got the Spearman in there as well. There's so many skirmishers here, though, for here. He just takes out the uh, Spearman, no problem. And MBL just continuing to attack. We should take note here that MBL does have fletching, uh, while Hira has fletching and uh, scale mail armor, giving him a very nice little boost. Now, that scale mill armor is going to be helpful against those Eagle Scouts uh, later on. But right now, the big thing, obviously, is fletching. Um, going to be interested to see if either player does decide to get some padded armor. Could definitely see that. 
Uh, by the way, should have mentioned this, or mentioned, <laughs> mentioned this earlier. Uh, we are casting here in 4K. I will be uploading in 4K as well. Uh, I really don't want to just copy other streamers. I try to want to bring my own style of casting here um as well as you know not just the casting the vocals but uh you know the visuals as well i want to give you guys the best visual representation of the game possible so i really hope you guys are able to enjoy this i know youtube does compress videos and, and you know ru ruins them a little bit but hopefully you guys are getting a decent video uh, experience here and hopefully uh you know into the future i can improve upon it even more now it looks like mbl is going to be going into the castle age here and that makes me worry a little bit uh, for Hira because, as you guys all know, if you do play Age of Empires 2, the first person to hit castle, especially if they actually use that castle advantage, it's huge. You get the veterancy for whatever units you already have out. You have the ability to transition to, like, knights or something, uh, which are extremely powerful units. So powerful, in fact, I'm going to give you a controversial thing here. I don't think it should take as many, like, here's an example, uh, as many scouts as it does to kill a knight, right? The math just doesn't math there for me. I know a lot of people may disagree or agree. I don't know. But the the castle age uh, first thing is just crazy. The same thing with the castle itself. So powerful. Maybe I'm just bad at the game. I don't know. But I just really feel... Uh, as though once somebody hits castle, they are just in an amazing position. I think a player that understands that better than a lot of people uh, would be Hoang. For those who don't know who that is, he rushes castle age every single game uh, perfectly and does crazy strats and manages to get himself really high up there in the rankings doing so. All right, castle age has come here. Only 25 seconds away, though, so really not that bad at the end of the day. But look at all these, look at all the upgrades that come in immediately. Horse collar, bodkin arrow, and bow. So I think there's another upgrade too, and we missed it. Uh, I think he already had double bit axe, so that wasn't it. But bodkin arrow here is going to be crazy. And Hira is gonna be going straight into man at arms uh, to actually counter the uh, archer slash uh, skirmishers from MBL. I'm curious to see how that actually works out here uh, with the melee. And look at this, those upgrades. It, I mean, Hira has absolutely no chance in that fight. Uh, it's just a big old dead pile of red bodies. There are only one blue dead body, one more there. But that trade for MBL was beautifully done. Looking at the score, we're pretty equal. Uh, I don't see either player having some crazy advantage or something like that. Town Center being brought up on the left here. So the second TC. Uh, from here, mark it up. We do have the uh, second lumber camp there as well. Back over on the other side, we haven't really watched MBL too much. Most of the action has been at Hira's base, so I do apologize for not looking back here for quite a while. Uh, we have a second TC now coming up for MBL as well. And let's check on that farm count. Always let check the farm count. 15 uh, to 25. Uh, so Hira really pushing that food right now. And we do have the Eagle Scout can be coming in here from the left. And I just realized this base is perfectly walled in. So, guys, this is what I'm talking about. This is pro player level stuff, right? With barely, and I mean barely, any walls actually made here, his base is completely walled in. Maybe not right there, right? Is there a gap there? Could be. I don't know. But if you see what I'm saying, like his base is almost perfectly walled in and he's barely used any walls. Using those structures perfectly here, you love to see it. And building more and more farms around that second TC. And we have a huge man-at-arms uh, army going down south. And oh, look at that. So that actually was a gap. I was right. And it looks like the Eagle Scout. Well, it's not going to kill anything. It is getting some great, great scouting information. So we can actually go into the vision here of Hira. Pushing forward now with those man-at-arms. And we're going straight for that siege workshop right in his face, too. That is really ballsy. And the speed of that villager going up there on that siege workshop. And there we go. The long swordsmen are here. And these guys have a lot of armor. Oh, boy. Yeah, they're going to be going straight in now towards the monastery. It's actually got a double monastery. But in the end, I'm not sure how well effective that's going to be against a mass infantry army. I typically like to see the double monastery versus like, you know, like scouts or I'm not scouts. I'm sorry, knights and things like that uh, or, you know, siege, whatever it may be. 
later on, obviously, you know, Siege for later on, but early on, they're really good at taking those really expensive units and making them their own and getting a really good transition. But if you're making monks, you got to remember, they're very expensive. And if you're going against a massive infantry army, I don't know if you're going to get your value. But I guess it really comes down to micro here and how well uh, MBL actually uses them. We actually have the Siege Workshop coming in with a Mangonel right on that front doorstep. Now, the one thing that I know these Eagle Scouts are going to be good at is taking out the Mangonels, especially if he starts to get those upgraded. And he's starting to beat down that archery range. The TC, though, getting in some good licks on top of those units. As good as their uh, range armor is, you know, eventually you're going to get taken out by a TC hitting you with that much. And here we go. More and more monks here. He's got four of them out right now. And they're just going to continue to convert as much as they can. We actually had a man at arms. Oh, I'm sorry, a long swordsman come up from NBL just smacking away uh, at that Mangano with the villager. Going to be keeping it nice and healthy. It's a lot of damage, though. I am wondering what's NBL going to do here. He's building up here in the back a little bit. The second TC working away here. Very nice second TC. I mean, he's got his gold. Uh, he's still using a mining camp for it, but he's got his gold. He's got some farms and a wood line right there. So nice placement there by MBL. And it looks like he's going to be going for some redemption uh, as Hira is going for a wheelbarrow. But that is a 100% dead archery range. Let's see if redemption can pull something back here. Can it redeem MBL for going for these monks? And a third TC coming up on the right-hand side. And obviously, Hira has no idea that that is going up at all. And look at that redemption, allowing him to start trying to take those mangonels. That could be huge if he did manage to get the conversion. I don't know if he's going to be able to get it. He's trying. Oh, man. He tried, but he was not able to get it. He's got one spearman, though, coming out. He did manage to get another long swordsman. And here come a bunch of villagers. Could this be a castle drop? The stone is up there. MBL stone getting pretty high as well. The monks have come out. He's got, oh, was that six, five monks? He's going for the mangonels. Can he get them? Big splash on top of it there. Both players building castles right on the front line. The monk not able to get the mangonels. They're sitting in the back though. But nice micro there by Hira, not letting him steal him at all. Perfectly done. He's trying, and the monk has to run away. And the castle uh, does go up, and he jumps in immediately. Both players do the exact same thing. Oh, man. MBL starting to take a few L's here. Does have... I'm sorry, he has four... I'm sorry, it wasn't a third TC. He has a fourth TC. Now, I wonder what MBL is going to do here. He's got a castle now in his, like, front yard. And that TC over here is basically going to be useless for a while. Might as well pull those villagers out of there. Because unless you are constantly microing these villagers, they're going to fall victim to that castle. And there's not much you can do about it. But right now, it looks like he is just sitting right there on the outer edge. Oh, man. I, no, I, I'm sorry. I was looking at the blue. I was looking at this blue line. He's fine. So he, as long as he doesn't run past that red line, he'll be okay. Uh, the monk production has stopped. He does have a single relic in there. And now the man at arms, aka the long swordsman here from MBL that he has stolen from Hira are starting to put in a little bit of work. Now there is a monastery up here for Hira as well. Going to be using that to try to get out his own monks. And here comes a battering ram. Uh, he's got two of them, in fact. All right, look at this army of monks by MBL. That is absolute insanity. All right, he jumps out with some uh, with some jungle warriors. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> Jaguar warriors. That's my bad. <laughs> Been playing too much of Age of Empires 4 lately. I uh, forget a few names now and again. I'm sorry about that. Uh, a lot of monks here trying to convert as much as they can. Longsword doing what they can. It looks like that castle, though, from MBL could go down if he's not too careful. And look at this. Hira says, fine, I'll build another one. This is crazy. And there's nothing here for MBL to do anything with it. I mean, he can't stop it, I don't think. Oh, my God, those guys are so fast. 
Castle pretty close to going up. Could be using the villagers to fight him, but he's just not. He's trying to poke away. Can he stop him? Castle getting really close. Looks like he did pull the villagers off. Oh my God. And the counter castle from MBL on the right hand side. Look how close that was. A lot of spearmen starting to come in. I'm not sure what those are even for at this point. I guess they're to try to run in and kill the monks. And uh, while MBL did lose his left-hand side castle there, he does have another one on the right. And while he will lose this TC, you have to remember, he already has three more over here. It's been four TC to two for quite a while. So his economy really starting to get up there. 93 villagers to 81, even though he's had his opponent on his front porch for quite a while. And here comes the conga line of villagers. Can they make it to that castle? That's going to be a lot. He is really sending it here. Oh my God, all the villagers, they just can't get on top. They can't get on top. The castle's melting. And we even have some walls coming up there. Oh my God, so many villagers dying. He is spam clicking that castle. He wants it up bad and he does get it. Oh my God. MBL putting on a show here. A clinical defense. Absolutely textbook. so many noises <laughs> we just have the villagers uh we've got the jaguar warrior there's a few spearmen in there just trying to take down that castle it's doing what it can but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough the one castle is actually trying to defend that castle but not able to do so just within uh out of reach there a little bit man look how much health that thing has both players just spamming rams now a few monks up here still chilling we have a vill uh, i'm sorry uh Karambit warrior up top as well and it looks like this castle from Hira will fall here in a moment. And it is seven uh, military population to 26 for MBL. The score, though, showing that Hira is winning. At least for now. Both players still in that castle age. He's trying to repair that castle right now. But I got to tell you, it's looking to be like a folly effort here. And it looks like he's going to run on back uh, to the castle over there. And the castle does fall. I think MBL going to move on now, maybe to that next castle, possibly. A lot of Jaguar warriors out here on the field. And the monk's going to go back up north a little bit. I mean, look at this. 51 farms to 39. MBL's economy is just going through the roof. Almost 100 villagers to 83. Castle coming up on the left-hand side to defend this area. And now MBL has taken that score lead. Obviously, at this stage, you know, 100 score is really nothing. But uh, it could be something here, considering Hira doesn't really have much of a military out on the field. We do have Town Watch going to be coming in as well. And remember, this gap still exists right here. I don't know why he never clogged that up, but it could be a very, very big uh, mistake here from here in a moment this ram actually still continuing to get value uh, the thing i'm most worried about here for hero though is his economy is now up for grabs it is completely out in the open and it looks like mbl is just okay with you know hack and slashing at those houses and the other infrastructure this ram looks like it's going to get another kill i mean that thing has paid for itself 10 times over what an absolute beast that thing is And it looks like we even have MBL converting the archery range and the barracks and a house. This is absolutely insane. And we actually have a few uh, light cavalry now out on the field. Maybe going straight for that villager. Seems to be the priority, and he does get it. Now, these would be very good at taking out the monks, uh, as well as any siege out on the field, including those rams. We'll see how well he actually does, though, here in a minute. Wow, look at the range. That villager is just like Neo from the Matrix just saying no to those arrows. Oh my god, there's battle elephants on the field. Oh my god. All right, he's going to try to repair. Here comes the battle elephants. This is what I'm talking about. Oh my god. 
Well, that is a, a dead ram. Gonna be going for the next one. Oh my god, he is spamming these out! Battle Elephants right on the front line. And it looks like that TC might survive if he actually takes out that ram in time. He's trying to micro him in and out of it. And it looks like the TC could go down. He's not actually microing the elephant. Should have put one elephant onto that TC and he's not doing it. I'm not onto the TC to save the TC. And we do have a few of those uh, upgraded scouts back there. And it looks like the elephant trying to save the TC. It's a big loss if he does lose it. And he does save it. Wow. That's actually huge. Here comes a bunch of rams from MBL going towards that castle now. But a bunch of battle elephants plus a mangonel. He's got to be careful. That could get some insane shots here. Well, it didn't even stop. It just kind of shot. That was crazy. Battle Elephant starting to lose quite a bit of health, though. He's going to be very careful with that. Those are not cheap units. They did get in some great, great damage. Uh, but at the end there, he is going to lose those as well as that castle. Score still extremely similar. We do have Hero now also on those four TCs. Just nonstop Battle Elephants here on the field. Man, I love to see it. All right, he's just going to continue now using those battle elephants. Going to take out those Jaguar warriors one at a time. Now, he does need to keep bringing out a few of those scouts if he's lost them because you want to be using those uh, to take out any monks that do appear out on the field. You can be very careful with that. Now, is there even still a monster? Oh, there is. So there's a monster there in the back. Now, as good as these battle elephants are, <laughs> they are slow. Uh, so multiple attacks around the map are going to be a problem uh, for Hira to deal with. But once that big push happens, MBL could be in a little bit of trouble. We have a mining camp coming up at the same exact stone that Hira's on. That's pretty crazy. Look, they're sharing. It's adorable. You can use the battle elephants to take out the structures that were taken away from them. And it looks like one of those elephants actually did fall there next to his TC. I'm not sure how that happened. Oh, yep, here we go. Bunch of uh, big old pokey boys. The pikemen going to be coming out. But double archery range, crossbow, and thumb ring coming out. And that could be a good counter to this uh, if he does get in a nice little death ball. Double archery range on the left-hand side as well. And here comes that army. Those elephants are in some trouble. They're going to go... I thought they were going to fight there for a second, but they changed their minds. Could jump a bunch of villagers into the TC, and he does. And the elephant's just going to run circles. TC getting in some pretty good damage there. Got to be careful with these elephants, though. I don't think just sending them in all uh, willy-nilly is a great idea. They are expensive. But yeah, here comes the archery range spam here. The crossbowmen. Be putting in some work. The elephants could turn around and fight, or they could just continue to run and let the TC put in the work on top of those units. And it looks like it's exactly what he's going to be doing here. That's a lot of losses there for MBL, but he is going into uh, Imperial while Hira is already there. On the right hand side, we do have a little attack here coming in. More of these very fast Jaguar warriors coming in from the other side. TC. A little bit of work in. We do, of course, have the upgraded uh, Arbalesters on the field. Arbalesters <laughs> on the field. Sorry if I'm butchering that name. Yeah, TC. Look at those arrows. They're like fire arrows coming out of that TC. Gotta be careful. Uh, gonna be a barracks coming up as well. Actually, yeah, quite a few barracks. And looks like he will take out the other one that was taken away from him here. I gotta tell you, the map's looking kind of blue, but down here. It's pretty red. The battle elephants going to town, but unfortunately they are surrounded. And that is a lot of units there from MBL. And here comes another huge force down the middle. Can Hira keep up here? Uh, it's going to come down to that micro uh, with those Arbalisters. We'll just call them Arbs from this point on. <laughs> High ground, though, for MBL is going to be holding that, which is very nice. Continuing to make a bunch of those elite skirmishers. Uh, I really think Hira needs to, uh, you know, deal with the issues at home right now. Getting hit over here, as well as on the left-hand side, this is just not good. You can't let your opponent run amok in your base. 
Also, giving up this high ground seems like a really weird uh, move there. I think he could have sat on this little hill, got that bonus, and been in a much better spot. But he's going to run away for right now. He's going to run towards his castle. And it looks like he does deal with the harassment on the right, at least at that spot. And he's going to be putting up a castle here to defend that other area. And now he's going to finally clean up back at home, which I think he should have done a little while ago. Uh, while MBL is attacking with, you know, skirmishers and spearmen, it's a few Jaguar warriors in there, but for the most part, this isn't really a harassment army. Um, the only real damage in there, the real DPS of that is, of course, the Jaguar warriors, but he doesn't have too many of them. Now, I wonder if he'll try to build some mangonels to, uh, to fight these, or if he'll build some more battle elephants. We really don't know what his plans are. Ooh. We've got the two-handed swordsman going in. Okay. Okay. Can they get some hits off, though? Oh. You swings. He's got the arbalist just coming in. I think he should have sent these in a little faster so they can actually back him up. He's forced to back up a little bit. He's got a lot more, though. A lot more arbs coming in. Man, look at the army right here. Using that high ground, though. Very nice there from here. And he's actually fight. Uh, he's doing a lot more moving than he is shooting right there. He is building up a bigger and bigger force, though. I'm actually not liking this for MBL anymore. I think these two-handed rune two-hander boys are going to come in here and, uh, you know, bring him to Pound Town and possibly. Can he go to the high ground, though? Nicely done. And I think the attack from Hira is going to back up. I'm surprised MBL isn't shooting as he runs there. He does. Okay. Mm -mm. I'm liking this army, man. These guys are cool right here. Big, uh, big advocate of the two-handed swordsman. Okay. We got a Trebi out here. Going to be using that to shell down this location. Got to be very careful, though. You don't want to lose that. Oh, man. We got some, uh, some upgraded rams right there. Those are going to be very, very tanky. He's got quite a few of them, in fact. This could get uh, this could get messy. Looks like he broke off a little force. He's gonna come in with the flank right here. That treb, yeah, that's that thing's. Oh, well, I thought it was gonna die. It actually didn't take that much damage from those. And here come the two hundred swordsmen. Yeah, here are just refusing to really engage right now. I think a few elephants mixed in now would be crazy good. There's not too much here that could actually fight those. I don't know if he'll transition back into those or not. Probably not. And it looks like the two-handed swordsmen are mostly dead. He's got a few continuing to spam those up, but these Jaguar warriors kill them so quick. Let's take a look. He's got the warriors down here. They're getting hit by that tiger. Backing up into his castle right now. Losing a lot to these rams. A lot of infrastructure. Got a castle coming up over here as well. Man, these arbs are just going to town right now, just putting in so much work. And it looks like MBL will be forced to back up, but not before he's gotten done a lot of infrastructure damage here. So was that trade worth it? I guess that remains to be seen. Got a little hit squad down here, but it looks like, man, these Jaguar warriors, they just, those things are insane. Here is, you know, he's trying to claw his way into here. Army really starting to drop form his economy. Uh, dropping as well. Not as much wood. He does have some food and gold, though. Stockpiled. And here we go. A castle on the front for Hira. I don't know if he can allow that to happen. If that castle is allowed to stand, he is in some serious trouble. Of course, he does have a treb. You know, that can you know continuously damage it. But it looks like that castle may be the big problem that MBL just gave to himself. Because it's not going to go up. It's going to get taken out. And now, MBL did not nearly get as much backstone because he, he let it get hit so much. And look at this. The two-handers are coming in now, putting in a bunch of pain onto MBL's army. Wasn't looking good for Hira there, but then MBL made the mistake. He went for the castle. And, and now it looks like he's getting cleaned up quite a bit. The arbs and two-hander combination here from Hira is insane. 
And now look there up top. He's actually starting to push in with a stronger force. He is not stopping, by the way. This line of troops is not stopping anytime soon. I think Jaguar warriors are needed. We saw how well those took him out earlier. The problem is he no longer has the skirmishers to take out the arms. MBL is out of food right now. Man, these buildings are just falling like butter. What is MBL going to do at this point? We are an hour in right now in game time. One hour in. And it's been nothing but constant action. Got a siege workshop coming up in the back. Probably going to make rams and just, you know, try to take out the infrastructure over there. Wouldn't doubt it at all. All right, looks like the Siege of Ba Sing Se has begun. That's a lot, and I mean a lot of skirmishers. Yeah, 28, probably more than that. Yeah, we're about 30. That castle falling is going to completely uh, disrupt his foothold here in the middle of the map. Oh, my God. Look how many of these there are. And it looks like the Trebs are just going to continue to knock down that castle. I don't think the villagers going to be able to keep up with it. Oh, he's actually sending in the... Oh, he's trying, he's trying to get the high ground. I thought he was going to go after the Trebs. That would have been weird. I don't really do that much damage. And here come the warriors. Oh, my God. And just like that, Hera gets swatted back like a fly. And the spam has begun again. Oh, my God. The back and forth action is crazy. That castle going up, though, is huge. And I think that siege workshop going up could be nasty. A few rams out of there to hit this area up here. Uh, we do have siege engineers coming in as well now for MBL. Man, the score is even. The villager count, even. Military is even. This is crazy, guys. And it looks like he's going to try another little uh, hit and run there with those troops in the south. Oof. And I wonder if this is actually going to get anything done. There's no Eagle Warriors down here this time to deal with that. And taking this out means no more uh, relics. Look at that pile. The absolute pile of arms. Now, what's he going to do? Is he bringing some down? Yeah, here we go. Some uh, Jaguar Warriors are on the way. And as we saw before, the Jaguar Warriors absolutely melt those uh, those poor two-handed swordsmen. Yeah, once those get on top, that's it for those. And it looks like here is actually pushing MBL back yet again. And the Jaguar Warriors are cleaning up here, but look at all the dead villagers. Nicely done there uh, by Hira. High ground fight. Not sure if I like that for Hira at all. Uh, even if he does have the better army, I'm not saying he does or doesn't. Fighting that high ground right there is just a nasty, nasty thing. Jaguar Warriors is going to be using those to take out the two-handed swords. This is where Micro starts to come into play. Uh, those two-handed swordsmen, obviously, they don't want to really fight. Uh, against the Jaguar Warriors, but they will happily fight those skirmishers if they can get on top of them. And looks like the uh, two-handed swordsman, little attack he did, will get finally get cleaned up by the castle. And now we have some Trebs here attacking on the right-hand side. Jaguar Warriors finding the two-handed swordsman. That is a massive pickup there for MBL. One Hira will not be happy about. The Arbs are going to come down south now. There is no skirmisher here anymore. He's just going to throw these away. This is crazy. What a mistake. What was the point of that? I am so confused. Where is he going? Not a fan of that maneuver by MBL, but maybe he has his reasons. Bunch of Jaguar warriors in the south. It looks like this castle is yet again under siege. Man, these trebs, though. The triple treb up here. Not messing around at all. Just putting in so much damage right now. And all the units that are coming this way are getting hit as well. I think this castle is going to fall. There's no villagers here to actually repair it. 
And it looks like we're going to be seeing the Jaguar Warriors move down south. Let's take a look at the vision. Uh, Hira does know about those, so he's got to be careful. Can't let those get behind those. And that castle is going to go down. He can no longer save it. Now, there's a lot of tanking over here, and there's nothing going on at MBL's base. So MBL is just happily, uh, you know, ecoing away at home while being able to focus on the attacks on the front line. He's actually attacking from multiple directions. You can see here in the north, right here on the, like, northeast, I guess, and over on the left-hand side in the west. Uh, Hira is leaking from every hole, every orifice. And it looks like a archery range transition is about to happen from MBL. Full out archery range. I wouldn't really say transition, but a full send, I think is a more appropriate word. Now, you did lose a few uh, archery ranges there, so these will definitely come in handy uh, for replenishing those. And you got to remember, we do have now four trebbies just destroying all of Hira's poor infrastructure on the uh, right-hand side of his base over here. All right. We got the two-handed swordsman coming in to take out the Trebs. The Trebs have gotten their value. I mean, they're expensive, but they definitely have gotten their value. Big attack over here on the left-hand side. Maybe here a feeling a little bit of a desperation, feeling like he has to attack right now. I mean, he took care of the Trebs, so I don't think he really has to, you know, fight for his life right now, try to go in and try to win. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, he's in a decent spot. He took care of the siege. He just has to, you know, put himself back together here. Man, the score is really, really equal. Hira actually in the lead uh, after that beautiful cleanup that he did. And now we're going to see... Uh, you know, just a all-out fight. We got skirmishers. We got jaguar warriors. We got arbs. We got two-handed swordsmen on the field. It's a battle. Uh, he needs these uh, warriors over here to fight these. These skirmishers just aren't going to cut it. Look at that death ball. Oh, my God. All right, so he's got an army coming up top. Might try to uh, sneak around the side to take out these arbs. Hero's army is pretty condensed right now. That army is going to get cut off up top. I actually don't like that from Hira at all. Uh, the 200 boys did get in there. There are some Jaguar warriors to clean those up. And because this army was so far down south, and he's bringing these in now to take out that castle, is this attack worth it? Is this worth Hira losing everything over? Um, I don't know. I would say no. I would say no. But he is microing the arbs now. But he did lose a lot right there. And he's going to have to replenish that now. Castle did go down. He's getting in some great damage. Going to probably kill another TC as well. That's really great. Going to be seeing the Eagle Warriors run down south now to deal with those. Now, something I think MBL could do, and I've, I've seen a lot of players do this, even the pros, they get this crazy tunnel vision going on uh, with their compositions and what they want to do. Just imagine for a second that MBL mixed in just a few archers. Just, just a few, right? That little bit of DPS, as great as the skirmishers are, you get your archers in there, and even though archers aren't great against the two-handed swordsmen, you, you at least get some uh, DPS involved that actually allows you to, you know, kite them and fight them in their lower numbers. TC did go down. Looks like the Jaguar Warriors did clean up the army, though. I mean, look at this. He, if he had a few more archers, if, like, you know, a few archers in here, he'd be able to take this out, no problem. He's got... Uh, you know, the upgrades and everything he needs. So while maybe his archers aren't going to be better than Hira's arms or whatever he has, uh, it still helps out in the long run. Just a few. I mean, just a handful. And he does save the castle, and the fight in the middle will begin again. Now, we do have the uh, nine two-handers here. They've gotten in a huge amount of economic damage. The Jaguars will clean them up, though. Back over here, we've got the attack yet again. Going to back up a little bit. I mean, look at, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> your your skirmishers are not going to take these out. It's just not going to happen. You got to get your Jaguar warriors in there. Uh, they do a much better job of killing those. And here comes that cleanup crew from the uh, south. 
Where is that arb death ball? It's up there. Doesn't want to lose that. And we do have a little attack here. Jaguar warriors in the north. Looks like they cleaned up most of those farms. So uh, here is Eco did take a big pounding. Jaguar warriors, while they are in lower numbers here, of course they do do better. Here are gonna take the high ground fight though. I gotta tell you, I actually kind of like what I'm seeing now from MBL. He's got his army more condensed. Uh, here his arm numbers are dropping. And I think at this point, because here his arm numbers are dropping, the Jaguar Warriors are going to roam free. I mean, I don't care how many two-handers you build, the Jaguar Warriors are going to clean them up. Uh, and without the Arb Death Ball that he had, he had like 30 earlier. Without that Death Ball, the Jaguar Warriors are going to come in and they're going to clean up house. And <laughs> just like I thought, right there, Jaguar Warriors became a little too much. And, you know, MBL takes the W. I got to be honest. A few points there. I really thought Hero was going to take it, but, you know, surprise. Not, I wouldn't say it's surprising that MBL won. Either one of these players could have taken this game. But uh, there was a few moments in that game where I thought Hero was going to get together, push, and get a W. But MBL, throughout that beginning, held his composure. Uh, Hero dropped that castle on him, dropped another castle on him. And MBL, just, you know, clinical, textbook defense, and he managed to uh, push his way back out of his base and just grab the W after an hour and 16 minutes. I'm about an hour and 17 minutes of in-game time. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this cast. If you do want to see more of these, please let me know, and I'll definitely try to keep posting more. Uh, if, you like, if you're having any critiques or anything like that, please let me know in the comments below. Anyways, guys, I am your host, Joe Desla, and I'll see you guys next time.